it occurred to me, and this came up in a couple different conversations I had with people, that's why, um, that because this teaching is all about, you know, uh, what's here right now, and that doesn't leave much room for stories and, uh, you know, theological structures and all this stuff, like, you know, all these explanations of mm -hmm. existential quandaries. Um, but mysticism itself, you know, there are people that are involved in this kind of thing also tend to be curious about like stages and things like that, which I personally find to be really distracting and <laughs> not really important. Yeah. Um, Someone would have to explain the stages to me before I could give any comment on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so it's, I'm just aware that as I move more and more into the teaching role, that those kinds of questions would come up. Mm. And usually when they have come up, the answer that comes out is why is that so important? Mm. And what is it about right now that you're uncomfortable with, that you're looking for an Who experience later? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's usually how those conversations go. But then at the same time, there are, I guess, practical questions regarding yeah, absolutely different experiential markers with clearing and abidance and all that stuff so in those situations i will use what i usually do is uh, i will tell well i'm going to give you two answers i'm going to give you the non-dual answer and then i'm uh, then i'm going to give you uh the, the answer you're probably looking for or the relative answer Right. We we could say almost that there's uh, there's only really only two stages to awakening, and that's uh, it's kind of like a just imagine a light switch, and it's either off or it's on, and uh, you're either awake or you're not, and the, there's really no that you you can be more or less informed, you can be more or less in line with or opposed to these things, but the, the truth is that um, there is there's only awakeness. So, and and this is hard to see. I mean, it's hard to imagine. It's not really hard to see. It, it, once we see it, you can't really get rid of it. But the um, but on the on the on the most on the clearest level, there's no difference. The thing to understand is that there are no stages to awakening we, we 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 sometimes call them stages because it's a manner it's a it's a teaching mechanism but what it amounts to is once someone has awakened then there are uh millions of different uh gradations of clarity within that so it's the clarity that we're really measuring and not the not the awakening what is the what and, and uh it, Clarity is a funny thing. Um, I thought I had a lot more of it a dozen years ago than I think I do now. <laughs> the because uh, the the more uh, the more I unlearn, the better off I am. And you just can't un unlearn unlearn everything at once that you knew and that you believed was true is actually wrong. So. It's the gradations that we look for, but within these gradations, we can look at clusters of gradations and we can and we can call that, we can say that, well, he's fairly clear. And what do we mean by that? It means he's that probably it means that someone that has had an awakening experience, but but may not know anything much about it right now. In other words, they um you can't there's no individual that has an awakening so there's really no individual that's on any level one two three four five what wakes up and this is the part that nobody can get until they do which is 
that the thing that wakes up is awakeness itself. And it it's not this body. We think the body is going to wake up and we can go to a, uh, a meeting and look up and there's Ajashanti or somebody and we can say, well, look at that. That's 150 pounds of enlightened meat. And that that's what we think is the enlightened meat is on the stage and that that meat is enlightened. And, but it isn't. Bodies don't, bodies don't have the capacity to awaken. Um, and bodies don't really have the ability to sleep in a true way. I mean, what happens is the mind just drops into nothing. And then, and whether it's, and when at nighttime, we call that sleeping. And when it's extended, we call it death. <laughs> but there's not a lot of difference because it, the, it's the, what happens is the, it's the dropping away of consciousness. And consciousness in this teaching, in this teaching, I have what, uh, you could call a a, um, a whiteness is an indetermined thing. And I don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about a whiteness. I'm talking about something that I am, and I, I can't not be, and you can't not be, but there's no and from that, right? There's it just it doesn't lead to something else. It's a it is a uh. And you're there's you're overwhelmed. There's no way to connect to it because you are it, and there's no way to understand it because you are it, and you can't under. What we wanted to do is I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see a white. I, mean, I wanted to see oneness. I really did. I wanted to see oneness, and I, since it knew it wasn't here, I figured it must. I was going to have to see it out there. When you're oneness, however, there's no in here and there's no out there there's only this so and this is not about understanding it's simply about being everything is is being um or appears to be being there appears to be a lot going on we could say it looks like you're alive looks like i'm alive looks like Betsy's alive and the world is alive and New York City is busy as hell and all of this and that and the other. And it's, it's right. And, and it, uh, within a certain finite, uh, and imaginary world, that's true. But what is really going on is, well, frankly, nothing. There's really nothing going on. And that's, that's impossible to get possible to understand. Um, I can now say it and I'm quite comfortable with it, but that doesn't mean I get it. It just means that I have received something. This is the transmission part, which is, you know, because waking up is really coming to find out who you are. What was first of all is finding out who in this teaching, it's finding out who you're not, then it's finding out who you are. And um because you once you find out who you're not, which is what nobody does with you much, is um, once you find out who you're not, then finding out who you are is not that difficult. But it's impossible as long as you're believing that you're a person uh, over here in Columbia, South Carolina, that needs to wake up in the in in the cosmos or the world or whatever. I need to wake up from my teacher. Like there's really somebody. Like there's really a teacher there. There's teaching but there's no one actually doing it. It's coming through that unit and it's coming to this unit, but uh, it's still, there's no one involved because there's no Fred, there's no bow. And it feels like there's a bow. It feels like sometimes that there's a Fred. It, I, don't, I don't run wild with that. I don't pay it much attention, but it can get an upper, upper hand in frustrating situations. Um, the other night I was talking with somebody uh, in the Philippines and we had the worst communications ever. I mean, it was a pointless meeting because he kept freezing up. I couldn't, so I couldn't hear him. And um, then he would unfreeze and then he would freeze back up before he could say anything. 
Then he would unfreeze, but we would both start talking at the same time. There was lag time between the two. It was very frustrating. And I noticed that before the end of it, that it didn't, I don't think it looked like it to him, but you know, things were getting very heated over here because not because I was angry at him, but because I was, because the situation shouldn't be as it is. See, and the situation actually couldn't have been any other way. And the attempt to argue with, with that, that's suffering. So there was suffering and it wasn't some uh, suffering that was occurring to an enlightened individual. There is no enlightened individual. There is this unit, and through this unit, awakeness is often using this unit um, as, a, as a megaphone, right, or a microphone. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, this microphone doesn't get up and say, well, how do you, how do you like that, <laughs> right? But we do. <laughs> yeah. We inhabit the world and we have a conversation and you think it's great and I or I think your conversation is great or whatever. And we get up and we say, man, did you see what I did? Right. And um, the surest way to if you are awake, the surest way to to lo lose that compet that is to just claim it. And I know this for fact, because that's what I did in 1992. A big awakening, big opportunity, snatched from, from the jaws of victory. The, uh, I, I um, pulled defeat right from the jaws of victory by claiming that, because that's what it felt like, is it felt like that I had achieved something, that Fred had achieved something. What I didn't realize is there's no I here. So um, what was, what was talking was the only thing that can ever talk, which is awakeness. And at that point, awakeness was very confused because you have to re recognize that it's not our fault that we think we are these things. And it's not even, it's not even wrong that we think we are these things. That's the way of the world. But the way of the world is not true. It's convenient. And it's believable, but, you know, but it, it really does stretch the imagination of intelligent beings when I believe that me and my life really stand out in importance over this universe from which they've just discovered billions more galaxies. <laughs> But I'm the standout feature. It is, of course, arrogant and insane to, to feel that way, but we all feel it nonetheless until we don't. And that's the way it works, because if a whiteness didn't play according to the game, which is to believe that you're a human being so that you can experience uh, so that a whiteness itself can experience relative life and come to know itself in an objective manner, then that uh, it, that couldn't happen unless it was to believe that I'm a Fred and I'm and and and, and this is when you uh, it's Fred and this is well I know it like, doesn't look like it from your angle but this is Fred's world <laughs> and I'm right at the center of everything and uh, I'm the one you can trust I'm the one you can count on. And because I ain't trusting you and I'm not counting on you to do anything that, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, I've gotten, but hopefully it's enjoyable and, and perhaps helpful that I'm getting off on these things because, it, you know, it's just like the easy answer is, right? Just, <laughs> it's like Santa going into his bag, you know? Well, I got, I got that toy here somewhere, but it's at the bottom of the bag. Let me tell you about these other toys on the way. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to talk about is not we don't want to talk about am i awake or not because there's only awakeness and if there's only awakeness that doesn't mean that there's only awakeness other than bow 
But that's what we think. That's what we think. We do. And that's what I thought was that I thought Fred could get to, would get to see oneness over there. Well, when you're oneness, there's no over there, over there. So that's a mind trick. And that mind trick actually, because this is, is this is a body, at least within the relative world, but the thing that thinks it's a Fred is actually a whiteness. So it's a it's it, the the whole character idea that I'm a Fred and all that, it's entertaining, but it's 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 you know it's utterly false. It's a whiteness playing a play, playing its part in a play, but it, it doesn't recognize that it's also playing all the parts <laughs> in all the plays. And um, so what we don't want to talk about is not so much, am I awake or am I not awake? Because there's no one to wake up or no one not to be awake. That's just a, that's a thought that we believe. And many of us will not give up on that thought until we die. Because the only way that we can give up on that thought is give up on being Fred or Bo. And that you'll, you know, if it is, a, I mean, I, I, I can remember I guess I can't really, I can't pull it that close anymore to where I can remember the suffering over not wanting to give that up. I just, I just noticed that it took me a long time before I could see the truth. So there must've been a hell of a struggle. So, but it's not waking up. It's because there's only awakeness. So it's, there's, there, but there's two types of awakeness. There's conscious awakeness and there's unconscious awakeness. Conscious awakeness is like right now when this knows, I know that I am awakeness itself. I'm conscious, meaning th that I'm aware of myself through this unit. And this unit is, the it is, as Nisargadatta, my favorite teacher, used to say, this body really is the food of awakeness. This is the food of consciousness. Or that's it's not the food of awareness, it's the food of consciousness. And, and so when this thing wears out, then there's no more fuel and consciousness ceases to pop through over here. And we call that dead. And then we bury these things and we mourn these things. But the thing that we think that this was, was never here. It was never here. What was here was awakeness wearing a bow hat or a Fred hat and uh, and hi my name is Bo my name is Fred said so awakeness to a whiteness yes and um so it's a play it's the awakeness seems to get a big kick out of it that's the only reason I can imagine it would continue doing it over and over again um but you know but that's me trying to figure out awakeness which is like an ant trying to um, explain a watermelon, right? I mean, it's just <laughs> how do you how do you do that, right? I don't know. <laughs> and um, except for it's even more ridiculous than that. And um, like an ant trying to describe a black hole. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Or, or, or even, or this one trying to describe it. Like, oh, can't do much better. <laughs> <laughs> so we come off of the awakeness track. The other thing that you want to come off of as early as you can is you want to come off the if track. Um, I just had a thing uh, where I woke up uh, according to the according to the surveys coming in uh, apparently uh, we had a lot of success in waking some people up in a in a single meeting on this past Saturday but we had a quick question and answer thing at the end of it and a guy who's been following me for some time he he had his question and his question and I, and I just and I called him on it and um sorrowfully i had no choice but to embarrass him a little bit but i tried to cover for him the best i could because he was doing the best he could it's the way that it happens because what he's his question was this when it got him it was see it wasn't trying to really get on board with us it was trying to just understand this thing that we get because his question was if it started out with 
if all of this is really oneness. And I just stopped him. <laughs> what are you doing in non-duality? If, if your belief isn't that this is oneness, I mean, you may be, haven't yet had the, the live, the living experience of, of, of being oneness, conscious oneness, uh, being because awake, there's awakeness conscious, unconscious awakeness doesn't know who it is. Awakeness conscious simply knows that I am consciousness and I'm not talking about Fred. I'm talking about I am consciousness. I am the, the one consciousness that inhabits everybody. So, and what I suggested to him is that he might want to approach things. Uh, he might to go ahead and, and, and he needs to go ahead and get in the water and swim, or he needs to go to a different well. Or a different beach or something because he'll never get anywhere here as long as he starts his questions with that i've stopped and i've stopped him on that very thing same thing more than once <clears throat> so he's obviously a very slow learner in that department might be brilliant and everything else but in that department he is a very slow learner because what he immediately did was he separated himself from all of us because we're here in the belief that there's oneness and we're seeking the evidence of, of that oneness. And so that we can have that ex the experience of that oneness, we, even though we don't know how that's going to happen or anything else, that's what we're really after. And um, so he's coming up with if. Well, if you don't believe this at your core, why have you been in non-duality for five years or whatever it is, right? It's, I mean, because if you look on the book, you know, if you or you look at the article or you look at the scripture or anything, you're going to notice that what they call it is non-duality. And that means not two or more. So it in effect is saying what? There is just one thing going on. Now, in between oneness and noneness, we can argue that. But at least at this level, we can say that there is oneness and only oneness. And um, when there's oneness and only oneness, who is telling me that they are not having the oneness experience? There's no bow, so it has to be a oneness, doesn't it? So recognizing this, this is this is the whole hard fact. And if you will look at this and tell yourself the truth, once it's been pointed out to you, you can wake up right this instant. You really can. You just believe me instead of you. But you don't need to believe me. You can check it yourself. Like, uh, other than this, what can you find? Can, can you find any more than this? Can you find any less than this? Can you find anything other than this? No, it's just this. And we don't even have a name for it. That's because the the the... the the Tao said, the Tao De Jang says, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. So we don't name it, but we do call it this. If we do, that's what I call it. You can call it something else. It doesn't matter what we call it. It is not a description. It will tell us nothing about it. But it does give us a way to share insights and experience that experiences that will occur to authentic seekers whether they ever wake up or not it, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't matter if they if they never wake up um this thing can still can still dramatically change their lives um and and, and they can be helpful to others even if they never wake up there's teachers that have never woken up that are very helpful to others. And there's teachers that think they've woken up and maybe they had some that have had that have lost it in the sense that they've simply come back to believing what? This teacher, in instance, would have to go back to believing that it's a Fred. And I can't pull that off even if I try. It just, it, because it's, you know, it really is what they say about the rope and the snake is that once you cut the light on and you see that that's a rope, uh, even if you cut the light off, you can't work yourself up to be terrified of the, right? Because the truth has been seen. 
you may not understand the rope. You may not be able to tell anybody else about the rope, but you just know you can't be fooled by it. That is a tremendous achievement, and you know more than most will ever know already without waking up. So, because that is the kind of intellectual understanding that you, that it, people feel like it equates with enlightenment uh, until that it happens to them then if there's enough arrogance there, they will still think it equates with enlightenment. But if there's humility there, they will be able to tell themselves the truth. Well, I, I found out something, but I can't remember exactly what it was, but I, but I can help you with this and this and this, because I know that there's something true here that I've seen that I can't quite unsee, but it's not my present experience. And that's where I started teaching, was from a place where I was in oscillation, where sometimes I knew that I was not a Fred, and other times it felt like I was a Fred who was teaching about something that had happened to a guy named Fred, when in fact there is no guy named Fred. Yeah. Um, so what you're really we're really after is we're after two things. Dude, four holds up four fingers. We're after two things. We're after two things. Um, and one is uh, stability, where we're not we're not having that so-called oscillation, and I say it's so-called oscillation because let's look. There's only one thing going on. Can that oscillate? I mean, where would it go? You know, what, what would have to happen? It, 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 there is no oscillation, but it feels like you in from. It feels like there's oscillation when you believe that you're a part instead of the whole. The sky is open and you, the part, can see the hole. But that has never happened and never will. When the, when the sky is open, there may still be somebody there, but what he'll be doing, what he'll be looking at is a fascinating sky. <laughs> Whereas if an enlightened, if an awakened being is right next to him and the sky is open, um, well, open or close, the awakened, the awakened one will know. That's that's me. There's only the one thing going on, no matter what it looks like. And you can see that oneness, the, the truth of oneness, does not actually need your participation <laughs> in order to be oneness. So this this is oneness. And if you want to hold out and say, what? Well, if this was oneness, if you want to start out from an impossible position, which is I, the character, want to know, you know, making it known that if this is true, then then this must be true also. But the problem is, it isn't true when you come out with that, and it, and it uh, it isn't true in an easy way. This yes, this is oneness, um, but. Uh, this is the man. This is mani the manifest world, and it can't cannot be other than nonness, which is just whatever that is. That's the uh, awakeness that we just can't talk about. So that this and everything else is that nonness, but what we can say is it is it is not other than nonness but it is not equal to nonness. There's not, not being and non-being are not opposites. There is being, really there is, and as I would see it, there is unbeing, and there is fog. Right, because when the when the when the fog lifts, so to speak, it'll be the unbeing that recognizes that says, "Oh, look, I'm being," and it thinks that it is being. But the thing is, is that it's both being and unbeing. Because when it goes to sleep that night, the this vibrant consciousness that just called out, that called all the shots, is now going back to a place of. It's not going back to a place. It's just disappearing. It's it's an absence of experience. We can't understand that. I don't get that. 
I don't understand it. It doesn't, it doesn't make common sense to me. And it doesn't have to. I, I feel it here. And um, I won't say that's my truth, as some people say in, in, in spirituality. I, you never, I don't think you'll ever hear me saying that's my truth. Because that, that is the truth as it's known here. But there's no one here to say that's my truth. And there's only truth. There can't be two truths that are, that are different from each other. There's just the one truth. The difference is, is that oneness, the oneness that we're discussing, we are talking about just one thing. It's just oneness, but we're not talking about sameness. So this is oneness. But it looks like the zillionness, right? I mean, it just does, does, it can appear any way it wants. And this thing, which is right, a, 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 a grain of rice in the Super Bowl, right, is gonna figure this out and gonna share that with you so that you, the other rice grain in the Super Bowl, can be impressed with this rice grain. And it's all just madness. It's just all this. There is no comprehending this. It's not supposed to be. There's. It's not a show for anybody. It's not for anything. It's all of this exists for this because it does. But why? There's no why. But there's no why not, right? There's. It's. Um, what the truest thing that we can say about this is that this is at least apparently, but this is, at least apparently, but that's, it's, that's, about as, that's about as true as we can get while there's still a little man form over here trying to both understand and explain the, the universe after it has been seen, not by the little man, but through the little man, that neither the little man is true nor being or non-being or whatever the truth is is just beyond it's just out of whatever we are which is so awakeness is sort of out of awakeness's league <laughs> it's above awakeness's pay grade because mm -hmm. it's not about understanding it's just this but what is this i don't know what are we doing here? I have no idea. Are we here? I have no idea. Now, we have a game we call relativity, and that's a place where um, many aspects of a whiteness, whiteness that, uh, which can come to be believed to be human being as sep separate human beings, where a whiteness actually thinks it is many separate things. It's not, ever, but it can think that it is. It can think it's a thread, and it can think it's a bow, and it can think it's a can. But none of that's actually true. So as you can see, we can talk forever on this and, and never get down to the little snippet that they want. Because it's Santa's, it's Santa's bag of tricks, right? I mean, a bag of gifts. Yeah, I've got that here somewhere. The uh, But in fact... There's no pat answer for any of this. And that's what we want. We want pat answers. And But what we find out is that truth is, it's not this and it's not that. It's, it's neither and both. It's really, and we can just go with, the, forget the neither. We can go, just go with both and, but it, it truly is neither or both and. But we can say it's, we can say it's both and, but we can't say it's this and not that. What is it? It's this. Can you break this down for me? No, you're part of it. <laughs> you know, you're, you're it. And there really are no parts. There are apparent parts. But there's no division. This is really cosmic soup. That's what this is. This is cosmic soup. This is cosmic soup 
talking to cosmic soup about cosmic soup. In the end, that's the truth of it. There's nothing but consciousness talking to consciousness about consciousness from beyond consciousness. From beyond space and time. Space and time exist within consciousness, but they don't exist outside of it. What exists outside of space and time? Nothing. What does nothing look like? It's nothing. What is it? What this doesn't feel like oneness compared to what? Is there any comparison to oneness? No. So let me ask you this. Is it possible? that this could be oneness and you not be understanding that, you not be believing that, you not be getting that. You're looking for some kind of answer that will satisfy the seeker and the seeker can say, oh, I found it. But what happens to the seeker is that it, it, it in all, in some ways, the only thing that happens is that the, the, the end of the journey but the seeker is death. But you know, um, sometimes we have a feeling, if I don't get this, I'm going to get this thing if it kills me. But if you get this thing, it will kill you. Because it will mean that the ego has come to see, that, or that, that awakeness has come to see that there is no ego. That there's no one there to get it. There's no seeker. There's seeking. There's that activity within oneness. But there's no one doing it. And it's not doing it for a reason. It's not, there's nothing sequential here that it's going from this and going to that there's no cause and effect it really isn't there looks like it within relativity there certainly is but relativity is not is not true it's a it's a dream it's one way to put it that seems to be the most the, the easiest way to put it is that it's a dream by which we mean it's an entirely different uh, world an entirely different set of truths an entirely different set of happenings and possibilities and all of this and that looks pretty big and scary for little old me over here i'm afraid oneness is going to get me so i'm hanging on to my identity over here but there's nothing to hang that on to there's there's just a whiteness sucking up a false belief and when you say when you see that there's no one to free there's no one to free. There's no one to wake up. We use that phrase because it's skillful, but it's not true. You know, you'll hear me say, yeah, I woke somebody up or this and that person up. But if you get me, you get me right down in the corner, you're going to hear me say, oh, hell no. I didn't do that. I can't do that because there's no I here. A whiteness woke up a whiteness for a whiteness's purposes. That's the so-called going on here. But what's what we're what we're all carrying around is we're all carrying around stories and none of them are true. So what we're really looking for is clarity so that we can begin. If we have enough clarity, we can begin to fold all the end, all these seeking devices that we've got going and all this attempt, these attempts to understand the big thing and the, and the, and the no thing and the everything and all this. And if we can, if we can, gain clarity, what it means is that I come to see that I am not. Not as, not that I am not as, uh, that I am not as an entity. That the only thing that can say I is nonness. No I there. It's a, it, I is a, is, a, is a phrase, and again, it's reasonably skillful, but it's not true. Because there was an I, there'd be a, there can only be an, a me if there is an other. And oneness is stuck in the world without, a, or is stuck without an other. There's only oneness. So the clarity has to come about the oneness itself, not about what oneness represents, what oneness can happen, what, it, what oneness means, nothing like that. What has to be seen is that. Uh, there is no individual to come to understand any of that. And that the real understanding that we speak of sometimes in hushed tones, and we use capital U's until we just can't use anymore. And it's, uh, 
the, the, the bottom line understanding over here was this truth, which is that you just can't understand this. But the, the bottom line joy is that you don't need to. There's no you there to, to understand it or not, but you can just stop with that and just say there's no understanding this. That calls off the dogs. Your dogs have been on a hunt and you've been trying to find your dogs, but they're way up there in the hunt. You're back here following their voices. What we used to coon hunt and stuff as kid as as young men. It was an excuse to go in the woods at night. The um but the dogs are in front of you. And um if the coon disappears into thin air, if there was a coon, because some of these these dogs can be just chase a scent, you know, they might even have it wrong. You know? <laughs> but if but once there's a disappeared coon if you will there's no there's no trail the dogs don't have a, a scent trail to continue to follow mm. what do they do they just turn around and go back to and they go back to their master and you know get some some attaboys and some rubs and some and and some food hopefully with some treats and we have to be content with that too we have to, we can't and we can't reach the goal. We got to be content with the treats. And the treat is having the understanding. And we we can see why we use a capital U with that. And we have the understanding, only there's no we. But that's what it feels like. It feels like we have the understanding. We can't tell you what that exactly is. We can certainly tell you what it's not. Clarity is coming to believe fewer and fewer lies that I've been feeding myself all my life. First big lie was what? Oh, Fred Davis. And I was taught that lie. I didn't come up with it myself. I didn't arrive here with Fred Davis emblazoned on the forehead of the unit. You know, it wasn't that. Somebody pulled that name out of a hat and pinned it onto the, the unit's night shirt. And I said, this is Fred. How, you know, how, how do I tell? You can look at the name tag. <laughs> well, didn't you just put that name tag on it? Yeah, but that's what we're calling it. It's Fred, that's Fred. And eventually you, 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 you involve the unit long enough in that lie, it will come to believe, it will take come to be an active part of it it will have a story too and the story will be i am fred and you are other i am fred and everything is other i'm fred and i'm good i don't know about you i'm fred and i'm the the leader you can trust it turns out that we would simply rather believe lies than the truth because the one that believes the lies there's a believer of the lie the truth there's no one there there's no one to believe a lie there's no one to disbelieve it so coming to see that there is there's but it's I like to go back to the Greeks and the Romans with this that you know the Greeks the Romans and you know the which meaning that the the the, the the, the um, royalty and the clergy and um, the uh, philosophers, uh, you know, they all got together and there was, um, and the, the big question that arose was, um, do, well, the, the question that finally arose was how do you live a good life? Because they gave up on trying to understand it. And they went to a, how do you live a good life? And that's what if you go and find all the old Greek stuff, it'll say and the good life. And that's what they mean. What does a good life mean? And that since no, there was no rule on what it meant, they had to decide it and, and uh, as they went. But the Greeks and the Romans, they were all like, do we or do we not have free will? And the non-dual answer that just can't be avoided is, who are they talking about? There's no one here to... Uh, 
to have free will or not have free will. There's just this mass. There's just this cosmic suit. And over there, there's a there are some wavicles or whatever that have been convinced that they are a thread and they're a bow and they're coming together and a, and all of this. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's experience. And it actually, it apparently is delightful for awakeness, even with the pain. For the units involved in it, it's okay as long as everything's going the unit's way. But the moment it, moment it becomes painful, which is the moment it becomes truthful, <laughs> then we're out of here. 